Chapter 421, Inferno Blood Devil Though ferocious, Inferno Blood Devil was aware of one thing. Do not fight when you know you cannot win. The common perception of devils was that they were stubbornly relentless at consuming humans, even though they might lose their lives for it. But in reality, devils would become even more terrifying with intelligence. Inferno Blood Devil examined the distance to Lu Shu. It knew full well it would not get out alive if things continued like this. Lu Xu shot it a glimpse and whispered, Guard it well, Grandpa. You see, it's so furtive. Don't let it use me to threaten you. From Inferno Blood Devil's Distress, plus 666. It was perhaps its first time to be described as furtive. Li Xianyi replied calmly, the tip of his white jade dagger positioned right in front of the devil's forehead. It can't. The two simple words exuded limitless confidence. Lu Xu had read the monster's mind. Indeed, with the human boy and its captive, the Class A might think twice before launching any further attacks. But before it could lay its finger on Lu Xu, its evil plan was already exposed. Inferno Blood Devil stood still on the altar. Then, it could only watch as Lu Xu poked its wings with a trident. From Inferno Blood Devil's Distress, plus 999. Lu Xu's face lit up at the ease of getting distress points. Blood Devil enjoyed high status in the remains and never had it been poked by a human like this. Mana welled up in its eyes as fury set in. Grandpa, have you seen anything like this before? It seems different from other gargoyles. They are made of hard stones, but this one has flesh. I'm guessing those human skeletons on the surface are related to it as well. But who put it here? Lu Xu wondered in curiosity. Then, he raised the trident again for another poke. Real flesh. From Inferno Blood Devil's Distress, plus 999. Though scared, it had dignity too. Inferno Blood Devil glared at Lu Xu, but immediately closed its eyes once it turned. Lu Xu's sun mirror was blindingly bright and it was directed right at it at the moment. From Inferno Blood Devil's Distress, plus 999. After close inspection, Li Xianyi decided to waste no more time. Just when he was about to kill Inferno Blood Devil, Lu Xu suddenly shouted, Please wait. Confused, Li Xianyi looked at Lu Xu. Why? Then, Lu Xu poked it a few more times with the trident. Okay, you may kill it now. Li Xianyi? From Li Xianyi's distress, plus 199. From Inferno Blood Devil's Distress, plus 999. Knowing that its death was near, Inferno Blood Devil suddenly spread out its wings and threw itself towards Lu Xu. Instantly, it let out a loud roar that almost tore the entire cavern apart. Surprisingly, though, the roar had materialized black waves, sweeping across Li Xianyi instantly. But it was a fatal underestimate of a Class A expert's abilities. Before it could extend its wings to the fullest, Li Xianyi's dagger had penetrated its skull immediately, and naturally darted towards its heart from the inside. The monster suddenly went limp and collapsed back to the floor. In the meantime, the white jade dagger ran through its heart before returning to Li Xianyi, its blade still clean as a crystal. Lu Xu made his move as well. Having finished the first gargoyle, the divine water immediately wrapped Inferno Blood Devil inside. Li Xianyi was at a loss. Your divine water can even consume that. Of course. Why not? Lu Xu grinned and proudly announced, didn't I say that it has no particular dietary preferences? Even ordinary gargoyles are edible and each of them is equivalent to a piece of broken magical weapon. I wonder how much this inferno blood devil is worth. The opportunity was too good to be missed. In any case, a Class B Inferno Blood Devil must be much better than an ordinary gargoyle, mustn't it? Li Xianyi drew a startled breath. According to the information, the Divine Water mainly fed on magical weapons. But how come its diet had become so much more diverse after it landed in Lu Xu's hands? Wait a minute, you called it Inferno Blood Devil? You know this creature? Li Xianyi suddenly asked. 
Lu Xu paused and replied, it's just a random name I came up with. Don't you think it looks like it's from the Inferno? Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief after having confirmed that Li Xianyi was convinced by his explanation. He just let the cat out of the bag. While controlling the divine water, Lu Xu asked, what are you gonna do next, grandpa? Continue searching for Li Yixiao? Meanwhile, he certainly did not forget to pick up all the other tridents. Li Xianyi's brows were knitted together. Suddenly, he raised his hands in the direction of the altar. In Lu Xu's spiritual detection, hundreds of invisible aura blades were rolling towards the altar like the rising tide. Instantly, the entire altar disintegrated from the base to the top platform. It was terrific. Even dozens of class Cs could be killed within an instant. Admittedly, the number of fighters would never be an advantage in the face of a class A. At this moment, however, a giant scarlet stone plate appeared under the altar, embedded in the floor. There were numerous symbols and lines engraved densely on its surface. In the blink of an eye, Li Xianyi split the plate in halves with his jade dagger. Immediately after, cracks started forming on the broken plates, which soon collapsed into minute powders. In that instant, the everlasting howling below the surface stopped abruptly. Then, Lu Xu felt an eruption of mana from somewhere underground. In the meantime, a loud noise thundered through the entire remains from not far away. Even the entire cavern began shaking like an earthquake had occurred. Li Xianyi lifted Lu Xu out of the entrance of the hollow, while the latter was holding Inferno Blood Devil's corpse and the eleven tridents tightly in his grip. Upon arrival at the surface, Li Xianyi let him down and said, I'm going to check it out. So, be safe and avoid the core region. The experts are certainly rushing there now. Then, his clothes started flapping and Li Xianyi shot into the clouds like a quick arrow. Chapter 422, Li Ixiao the Target When Li Xianyi had just encountered Lu Xu and the individual practitioners thought they were saved, but ended up still having to continue digging. There was a dense crowd of gargoyles chasing after Li Xiao in a wild chase in the north of the remains. Lu Xu's practitioner scavengers thought they were the saddest individual practitioners in the remains, while in reality, those targeted by Li Xiao suffered a far more tragic ending. They might even lose their lives. Li Xiao had been to the Lao's remains. Moreover, before he was enlisted into the Heavenly Network, he had long since been interacting with various kinds of people like Li Dian and he was well aware how the world was like out there. And the cultivation realm was yet another world. Not everyone was fond of conflicts. Feng Yeming, for instance, had only been a guardian of a national territory even after his ascension to Class B, he had declined all requests of violence. At the same time, not everyone was able to stick to his original goal like Feng Yeming. Indeed, only the strong had the right to maintain their focus on their initial dreams. It was said that the world of brotherhood was where there were people. But what was it, exactly? Here, there were neither chivalrous swordsmen, nor debates over sword skills among distinguished figures. In such stories, girls were thought to be daring and decisive, while in reality they were crude and brazen. Novel figures such as swordswomen could not occur until after the regeneration of spirit qi, as they could strengthen themselves via power awakening. Otherwise, in the past, how could they maintain their attractive appearance after so much training and exposure to natural elements? Maybe they had arms and legs even thicker than loose shoes. In fact, the world of brotherhood was never as appealing as it was made out to be. It was a battlefield of fame and fortune, or a shark tank, where deaths could happen any time. An Li Ixiao had been deceived and betrayed a number of times before. Back then, he was chased out by his very master, for his slacking attitude when it came to practicing. Afterwards, his experience in the harsh world had affirmed his resolution to become stronger, so that he could play with others instead of getting cheated himself. In simple terms, he had grown from a naive teenager to a troublemaker. At this moment, a lone figure in the distance suddenly caught Li Xiao's attention. The latter's eyes lit up. Happy to see you again, big head. 
apparently the other person was not a Chinese and he could not understand Li Xiao at all. It just happened that he had been beaten up by Li Xiao before in the Lao's remains. Actually, this metahuman of Class B was rather powerful, though his defense was much weaker than Li Xiao's. At the moment, Li Xiao wildly ran towards Big Head with over 1,000 backers behind, immediately scaring the latter away. It was not a bloody joke. He had wanted to avenge himself on Li Xiao, but how could he have expected Li Xiao actually appeared with 1,000 plus monsters? Are you freaking insane? Li Xiao almost laughed his head off at Big Head's receding figure. He felt that he was such a genius to think of this idea. That aside, even Li Xiao himself did not dare to stop. Although he could make it out alive from a few hundred gargoyles, he was at the end of his wits in the face of over 1,000. It was really too many. Then, he ran into a group of Asians, whose faces turned ashen at once at the sight of Li Xiao and the throngs of gargoyles behind. Li Xiao's eyes brightened. In fact, not all Asians looked the same. Some were shorter, some were darker, some had smaller eyes, and some. But it was all pure bullshit to Li Xiao. To him, the easiest way to differentiate friends from foes was that the former would not run away from him. So long as they were not his comrades, why would he care about their safety? Li Xiao's life philosophy was just this simple and straightforward. The bunch of Asians took to their heels while shouting a baka as they ran. Upon hearing that, Li Xiao became even more motivated. They were from the collection of gods. The cog was equipped with high-end combat capabilities as many Japanese people from various factions had been striving for the best and eventually ascended successfully at the onset of spirit chi regeneration. Yet, no one was that powerful in the group in front. Thus, Li Xiao quickly outran them for a back attack. When he was making his way through the group, many of them thrust their shurikens and katanas towards Li Xiao. However, a tiger sign suddenly emerged from his back the instant he dived into the crowd, shielding any attacks from low-level practitioners. When he cut their escape route from the front, the collection of gods fell into desperation. How could they remain hopeful with an unbeatable person blocking their way and over thousand gargoyles chasing from behind? In that instance, recognizing their unavoidable death, everyone spared no effort in an all-out attack against Li Xiao. But how could they harm someone who could not even be killed by a Class B? Gargoyles roared past in perfect coordination with Li Xiao. The COG members had nowhere to run. Instantly dozens of COG practitioners were drowned in the sea of gargoyles. In merely half a minute, like a wheat field in the aftermath of a plague of locusts, no one survived. Li Xiao carried on his running at once. His backers attacked indiscriminately. Then, he became even more delighted at the pile of black stones in front. His backing was about to get even stronger. However, those stones would only quiver violently as he went past without releasing a single gargoyle. Confused, Li Xiao took a closer look at a rock and realized that the crack had been sealed up by gray soils. As a result, the gargoyles inside could only struggle to get out but ended up shaking in the stones. With so many gargoyles behind, neither did he have the courage to crack the stones open. Who the hell did this? Distress crossed Li Xiao's face. Why do this to gargoyles? The same sight ran on for a few more miles. Li Xiao could hardly understand the rationale behind. Suddenly, he was reminded of the dismantled club when he wanted to have fun with those pretty girls inside. It must be the same class B Earth type metahuman who's behind both instances. Otherwise, how on earth could so many class B Earth type metahumans be gathering here? How could it be so coincidental that all the person's doings made him displeased? Thus, he must be targeting him. From Li Xiao's Distress, plus 666. Chapter 423, Materialization Type Class B. Roaming in the remains, a sneeze suddenly caught Lu Xiaoyu by surprise. She frowned and murmured to herself, Is Lu Xu missing me? She beamed with joy in the next instant. 
Of course he was, else how could practitioners fall sick? What she did not know was how upset Li Xiao was with her sealing stones, and that the latter was already pondering why he was targeted by a class B earth type metahuman. But Lu Xiaoyu and Li Xiao's path diverged from there, as the place that Li Xiao saw the black stones was also where Lu Xiaoyu changed her direction. Yet, Xiaoyu did not think further, since the materialization type expert Johnson in her second tier of celestial map was almost complete. The time lag was due to the fact that Lu Xiaoyu herself had yet to reach class B. Although celestial powers were way stronger than spirit qi, it was still a huge jump from class C to B. It might only take her a short time should she reach class B. Sitting on a black rock with her arms supporting her little head, Lu Xiaoyu watched as the black smoke conjured up in front of her. It was the class B materialization expert Johnson. This one looked much better than Anthony, as expected, Lu Xiaoyu grumbled. Meanwhile, Anthony was still giggling underground. What was he laughing for? It was all Lu Xu's fault. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 299. But her brows knitted together as she was sensing Johnson's power. Huh? Can only materialize something familiar? Then, she controlled Johnson to conjure up a pack of chips. But he disappointed her the moment Lu Xiaoyu opened the pack. Despite its realistic appearance, it was not real but purely energy. Lu Xiaoyu groaned, useless. Materialization powers did not make them the creators. In fact, they could only build models with their mana. It appeared that cartoons were lying when they showed real things could be produced from nothing. Indeed, in the earlier fight with Anthony, Johnson had mainly materialized energy form animals as a means of attack. But instead of bleeding or arresting biological mechanics like other living creatures, those animals would break into pieces or vanish directly. Thus, things conjured up were not permanent either. Even movement of the materialized body consumed extra energy, though it was insignificant compared to the maintenance of its form. Yet, they would still disappear when drained of mana. While normal animals relied on food to survive, materialized creatures depended on their creator's mana. So what should she conjure up? Lu Xiaoyu fell into deep thought, what was her most familiar object in the world? She froze at the thought. Wasn't the answer Lu Xu? She calculated carefully the possibilities of materializing Lu Xu. Honestly speaking, she indeed knew him very well. She saw him in the morning once she woke up and sometimes listened to his bedtime stories before sleep. Lu Xu cooked for her and brought her out for fun. For so many years, Lu Xu was like an indispensable part of her life. Her world would also collapse with Lu Xu's disappearance. Lu Xiaoyu could not even bring herself to think about it. Without Lu Xu, there would be no one to prepare her meals, buy her new clothes, make her happy or to take care of her. The reverse was true too. In that case, she would no longer have anyone to miss wholeheartedly. She would not have to surprise him by washing his clothes or give her heart to anybody anymore. Back in the orphanage, Lu Xiaoyu had a small appetite, but Lu Xu always needed more to eat as he grew. Yet, everyone was given the same portion and no extra food could be provided. Thus, Lu Xiaoyu would give some of hers to him and she would be happy seeing Lu Xu's stomach was full. Then, she would start thinking about the next meal as she could offer half of hers to Lu Xu again. In those days, her greatest expectations of everyday life were all linked to Lu Xu. As a result, she would always return no matter how many times Lu Xu sent her back to the orphanage. Therefore, to her, Lu Xu was the only reason that this world was still a beautiful place and that the future was worth living for. She had never imagined how it would be without Lu Xu, because the world would be meaningless to her then. In the orphanage, Lu Xiaoyu was the only girl who got to wear white shoes and the only girl who always had snacks. She could talk to Lu Xu when her mood was down, bite his arms when angry, watched as he pretended to be in pain while in fact she was not even willing to bite hard. Suddenly the entire remains started shaking like there was an earthquake. But Lu Xiaoyu could not care less about that. 
On the other side, Lu Xu was gazing in the direction into which Li Xiani had disappeared, distress was all over his face. As he continued controlling his divine water to feed on the tridents and inferno blood devil, he cursed the old man for ruining his plan. Now, all his individual practitioners had run away. He would have lit up the fifth star had the old man not appeared. But there were gains as well. The consumption of Inferno Blood Devil was almost done and the water had actually expanded visibly again. Besides, tridents were true, functioning magical weapons that could provide much more mana than broken ones. The divine water was as big as six bathtubs at the moment. At this instant, he felt his celestial map blink, as if calling back to something. But nothing else happened. What was that? Back to Lu Xiaoyu's side, a sudden wave of mana erupted from Johnson. Then, a Lu Xu slowly came into form from thin air. His hair was unkempt, and his face handsome as usual. He was dressed in a simple, cheap t-shirt and a pair of 29 yuan sweatpants whose elastic cord was on the brink of breaking due to prolonged wearing. Lu Xiaoyu's eyes were twinkling. She did not know that many other materialization metahumans had also tried to conjure up humans but all to no avail. It could not work even for family members that they were together with for decades, as if it was impossible to materialize a creature so intelligent as human beings. But Lu Xiaoyu had succeeded. Nonetheless, though lifelike, this Lu Shu was not equipped with celestial map, flying daggers, divine water, the head-twisting gourd or his sea of chi and snow mountain. It was simply the strength type Lu Shu at the peak of class C. Chapter 424, Lu Shu's Clones Lu Xiaoyu studied Lu Shu carefully. Indeed, he looked exactly the same as the real one. Suddenly she said, will you ever eat half of my chips again in the name of tasting one piece only? The Lu Xu in front replied, no, never. Lu Xiaoyu laughed until her eyes squeezed into two crescents. Sensible answer. In fact, she did not have to say it out besides will control. But she thought it was rather cool. Will you ever put me to bed with perfunctory lame jokes again? Lu Xu replied, no, never. Will you ever add cumin or black pepper into tomato with eggs at your own disposal? No, never. Will you, leave me, after she finished the question, she hesitated and mumbled, so boring. It was just a puppet, not Lu Xu himself. But then she suddenly thought of an idea. She could alibi him when he was out there executing his evil plans. It was a very practical and helpful use that Lu Xu would probably need. Honestly speaking, in terms of combat effectiveness, the materialized Lu Xu was so much weaker than the real person. In any case, he was a pure class C strength type with neither his mysterious celestial map nor his gourd, Sea of Qi and Snow Mountain. Thus, it was not Lu Xu after all and Lu Xiaoyu had lost her interest. Her little cheeks suddenly blushed. Take off your shirt, Lu Xu. Her voice was barely audible towards the back. In spite of living under the same roof, Lu Xu had paid special attention to privacy. He would not take off his t-shirt in Lu Xiaoyu's presence even in summer. When he went to Xiaoyu's room for an air-conditioned night, he would dress himself decently and sleep on the floor. To him, although they had always been depending on each other, there were bottom lines to maintain and he had done a good job. At this very moment, the materialized Lu Xu suddenly raised his brows. What did you do, Lu Xiaoyu? Lu Xiaoyu almost jumped off the stone in shock. She did not control him to say that. It felt like she was a naughty kid whose playful deeds had been discovered, or her secrets were revealed. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 999. How was that possible? It was only a materialized being, how could she lose control? Then, the Lu Xu in front clenched his fists and stretched his fingers again. Strange. Did you conjure me up, Xiaoyu? Despite the foreign strengths in this body, I can get along completely well. Besides, I myself don't even have to be distracted to control here. 
Instead of having consciousness by itself, a wisp of Lu Xu's own was pulled here and the two sides were perfectly in synchronization. Everything that happened here was registered in the main body as well. Just now after Lu Xu's celestial map had flickered, a feeling started growing stronger in his mind. Then, he could not resist the temptation for a remote control. It just felt like a smoothly running split screen. Was that his clone? Lu Xu suddenly realized the gist of the problem. It seemed that Lu Xiaoyu could actually create class C strength type clones of himself using Johnson? Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyu had noticed too that she had lost all control of the materialized Lu Xu. She asked carefully, when did you come here? I spoke once my will reached, Lu Xu was still getting used to his body. Didn't hear me say anything? Lu Xiaoyu flew a kite. What did you say? Lu Xu was curious. <laughs> Nothing, Lu Xiaoyu was finally relieved. The long time spent with Lu Xu had taught her the trick of spotting his lies. For example, when he insisted that he did not sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars. Back then, she pretended to believe him just to save him some face. But everything was way too weird. Lu Xu had read about materialization powers on the Golden Foundation forum and he was clearly aware, though Lu Xiaoyu was not, that no one had managed to conjure up humans so far. Yet, not only did Lu Xiaoyu succeed, he could even control it himself while Lu Xiaoyu could not. Could it be due to the secret linkage between their celestial maps? If that was the case, Lu Xu seemed to be the more dominant one of their twin celestial powers. It was apparent from the fact that Xiaoyu's spirits could be restrained by his corpse dog and that he could even reverse control his clone. Xiaoyu, try materializing more of me using Johnson and see how many we can get, the thought suddenly crossed Lu Xu's mind. In any case, Johnson could conjure up so many crows back then. So he should not have any issue with numbers. Lu Xiaoyu immediately did as told when she was still feeling embarrassed for her previous thoughts. One, two, five. She stopped when the fifth Lu Xu had appeared. This is the limit. Five Lu Xu's exchanged startled looks with one another until one quipped, It's so bloody weird. There are so many of myself and we work perfectly well like the five fingers. It was like the enhanced version of Naruto's shadow clone technique. Despite their low combat capabilities of merely class C, it was already high enough and they were advantaged in terms of numbers. One of the Lu Xu's raised his hand, conjuring up a spear from thin air. It was precisely the same as the one he was familiar with. He could actually use Johnson's power directly. Lu Xu turned and hurled the spear out at full strength with a loud bang. The spear crushed a stone completely, together with the gargoyle sealed inside. Lu Xu was shocked, not for the matchable strength of his clones, but that he could spare his spears. How about materializing five of himself when he wanted to have a fight with someone in the future? As a matter of fact, why not follow Lu Xu's usual fighting style instead of using Johnson to come up with some other unfamiliar techniques? Although it would consume a great deal of his clone's mana and there was no protection from his divine water nor celestial cloak. The existence of five clones as his supporting attackers was already awesome. More importantly, Xiaoyu could establish contact with him anytime anywhere without causing him any inconvenience. Chapter 425, Group Out for the Pledge Despite her failure to control the materialized Lu Xu herself, Lu Xiaoyu was happy nonetheless, even though she could not even erase those clones. Neither could she stop the consumption of Johnson's mana, but she felt it was only good this way. Admittedly, the clone had been compelled to make many promises to her earlier, but what was the point if it was not Lu Xu himself? That was why Lu Xiaoyu found it boring. Currently, though, it was Lu Xu himself who was standing beside her, not a mere puppet. It felt just wonderful. Where are you, Lu Xu? Lu Xiaoyu asked curiously. Lu Xu glanced around and replied, it looked about the same everywhere. I have never been to this location and it's hard to confirm where I am now. Did you hear the earthquake just now? Yes, I did. Lu Xiaoyu nodded. Which direction? 
Not sure, Lu Xiaoyu was too engrossed in conjuring up Lu Xu earlier and honestly she felt the entire ground was shaking together. Then did you hear the thunder? Lu Xu continued. No. Lu Xiaoyu was quite sure about that. Seems like we are pretty far apart as the sound has yet to reach you. Lu Xu estimated that they were at least 20 kilometers from each other. 20 kilometers was not long compared to the size of the remains. After some consideration, Lu Xu materialized caps and masks for his five clones, ready to protect his new trump card from unnecessary attention. Just when Lu Xu was about to let four of the clones dissipate, four people emerged from the ground from not far away, each dressed in a red uniform. One of them knelt down on one knee and said in English, his face pale as paper, this should be far enough. I'm beyond my limits and this is the farthest I can get through Earth. Yes, it was a narrow escape. We underestimated him. But we've lost so many broken magical weapons, so how should we report back? Another person knitted his brows together. It was a grave mistake. I suppose you don't have to report to anyone anymore, a voice sounded behind them. Who's it? The four of them turned in shock. The next instant, however, all of them were dumbstruck at the five loose shoes. Despite their different outfits, their masks and caps were identical. How did he make it here? Five of them too. Was this a sci-fi movie? Wait, no. It was a freaking horror movie. From Stanton Hope's Distress, plus 999. From Staples Horace's Distress, plus 999. From the four Class C experts from the Pledge took great efforts to arrive there, the supposed safety area. But how could they have imagined to bump into Lu Xu again? Five Lu Xu's stood there at ease, as though having been waiting for them for a long time. As for Lu Xu, he was pretty shocked. Actually, after he accidentally let them escape, he had always been deliberating how to find them again. It was almost impossible, since neither could he catch them, who were fleeing via soil transport, nor locate them in the deep earth, despite his sensory abilities. However, at this very moment, the four of them sent themselves to his clones. What a coincidence. <laughs> You've gone too far. Then, the four class C's could only stare as five Lushus materialized a spear each from thin air and leaped forward instantly. The pledge was utterly routed as the Lu Shus hurled their lances and shouted, Excellent runners, aren't you? Huh. The pledge members were all on the brink of mental breakdown. Completely confused and dumbstruck, they did not even dare to fight back. Earlier, they were not even able to defeat one Lu Shu with five people. Now, with five Lu Shus. From Stanton Hope's Distress, plus 999. From Staples Horace's Distress, plus 999. From. If things were to be continue like this, they would not have enough strength to run. Giant flames erupted from a person's body, cocooning him inside. The sweltering heat wave rolled outwards in wakes, messing up Lu Xu's hair. In a split second, he summoned five fiery anacondas and shot them towards Lu Xu's clones at the best of his abilities. He had reached his limits. Run. When he's held back. Yet, with Class C strength type power, Lu Xu's clones had speeds and strength parallel to Lu Xu himself. Before the arrival of the giant serpents, immediately the five of them applied leverage, dodging their attackers with different movements at the same time. Under the rolling clouds in the sky, five Lu Xu's suddenly jumped to their feet, casting their spears out like thunderbolts. Once the first spear flew out, another one appeared beside each one of them. Just when the clones were about to descend at the highest point, they launched another round of attack as if hovering in the midair. The Earth-type metahuman plunged underground with his teammates at once. There was no time to care about anything else. However, having surpassed his mana limits, he vomited a mouthful of blood the moment they dived into the earth. His head was throbbing in pain. However, soon they were horrified to realize that all earth elements had been locked around them. Anthony took charge, giggling. 
Under his power, the four pledge members could neither sink nor emerge. Stuck, they became Lu Xu's target. But Lu Xiaoyu left the killing to Lu Xu. His spears were coming with lightning. Then, against heavy crackling, the four pledge members were buried in the thick dust swept up by falling spears. A giant cavern was formed from where they were due to the intense bombardment. No one could survive the intense shelling. Lu Xu stood stationary after he landed on the ground. Honestly it felt good to have five clones. How did you come up with the idea of materializing me? Smart move, he turned and smiled at Lu Xiaoyu. Lu Xiaoyu's eyes squeezed into little crescent moons again. Of course. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look